Hi everyone, and thanks for tuning in to another episode of Budget Investing. My name is Dylan, and today I'm going to go over um, some investing news and what's going on in the market. And as well, I'm also going to go over what is a dividend and why do companies even pay it in the first place and why you should be concerned about them. So the big news that came out yesterday was that AT&T is making a huge deal with Discovery. They're selling off Warner Media. For AT&T, this is all about paying off that debt that they have. They're showing that they have way too much debt that they've kind of spread themselves too thin and they're not able to do what they're looking to do. They're getting out of the media industry and they're sticking with being just a straight telecom company. Now, for the last five years, AT&T's price has been pretty stagnant. As you can see, it hasn't gone up, it hasn't gone down. Of course, they have that overall trend with everyone with COVID, that huge crash. They haven't even, even been able to recover since then. They've just really been super stagnant. So they are making a major change. They're mixing things up. You know, just three years ago, they bought Warner Media, but unfortunately they have admitted to themselves that, hey, this isn't the right move for us. We have way too much debt. We're looking to make a massive change and hope Fully, they can start to pull themselves out of this hole that they've dug themselves into. In addition, on top of them selling off Warner Media, they have made the decision that they are going to make some major changes to their dividend. Now, this dividend typically before was paying about 15 to 16 billion dollars per year, and after this sale of Warner Media goes through, they're dropping their dividend down to about eight or nine billion. That's almost a 50% cut in their dividend. And for a lot of people, they've been holding AT&T because of that steady income from their dividend. So what does this really mean for AT&T? So if they're dropping down the total amount of money that they are paying and they're selling off Warner Media to get removed debt, their play here and what I can only assume and everyone else is assuming is that they will be using that extra money that they're not paying in dividends to pay off this debt, get rid of some of that interest that they're paying off on and they're looking to totally change the outlook of this company and maybe in the future they will make another adjustment and we'll see where they're going. But for today, for a lot of the reasons why people were holding AT&T before, those reasons no longer apply and people are looking to sell out and make some major changes as to what um, they value in AT&T. So let's kind of dive into what is a dividend and why hopefully some of you came to this video today. So imagine this gray box that you see on the screen here. This is all of the money that a company has after they have finished paying off their bills for the month. This is their free cash flow that they have at the end of the month. So there's 100 squares in here. I made the box 10 by 10. So each box is going to represent about 1% of the total money that they have. So a company has a lot of options of what they can do with this money and how they want to distribute it. They can, of course, you know, give into bonuses to their staff or they can use it to purchase another company or reinvest into the company and hope that they can improve on what they're doing to make more money. Now, what a lot of companies do as they go, well, if I put 100% of my money back in, you know, I'm only going to get so much of a return. So something that companies will do, they'll go, well, I'll offer maybe 2% of my total portfolio. And that 2% of that money that they have, they pay it back to you, the shareholder. Now, this is, can obviously be really enticing to someone like myself, who my whole investment strategy is based around getting this little slice of the pie. I want to use that money to be able to purchase more shares in the future so that I get more money and then eventually I can live off of that in the long term. Now, it's not always super simple like this if they just give just a tiny little percent. For example, if I look at AT&T, they pay out 65% of their money that they have at the end of the month. So what that looks like is this. This is what it looks like. So 65% of all of the money that AT&T gets every single month, they put right into your pocket, or not every month, but every quarter. They give that money to you. So it doesn't give them a lot of money to work with to continue to 
advance their technologies or improve their product or improve the company so that they can continue giving you more money. You want to be careful that companies that you hold don't pay out too much money because if that number gets too high, it gets unsustainable and they just won't be able to maintain it. Now, every company is a little bit different. Every sector is different. How much they can pay it will vary depending on the kind of money they have come in. Now, a second example is Apple. They only pay out 17% of their free cash flow back to their shareholders. And that would look like this. So the margin on the screen is obviously so much smaller. Apple gives back so much less money because Apple thinks that the money that they have, this big giant gray block that is better used when working on better technologies or the next product or advertising or anything of that sort. They feel that their money's better used in this capacity. Now, this isn't saying that Apple is a better company than AT&T. You would hold each company like or their stocks for a different reason. For a lot of people, Apple is seen as a growth play. It's a super company that is always growing and making you more money. So that capital appreciation is going to make you more money in the long term. In addition, they grow their dividend around a 9.5% rate every year. They've been doing it for about eight years now and their dividend yield is very low. So they fit in very well as a dividend growth company where I know they'll give me more money in the future. Now, if we contrast that over to AT&T, you can see that they've been growing their dividend for 23 years, which is nice. It's been consistent and it only grows at about 1.8%. So it's not keeping up with inflation, but because they pay out a 6% dividend yield, which is again considered very high and their pay ratio is also 65%, which is again, very high. They don't make you a lot of money in the long term. This is a company that you hold because they're paying you a lot of money today and that's maybe you're just using that money to live off of or you're using that money to purchase other stocks in other areas. So this kind of brings me back to why I hold specific companies. Some of them I'm using for their high yield. And in this case, you can see I have about 31% of my total portfolio is at high yield. So these are companies that I'm holding because they pay me typically more money if I in comparison to holding another company. This is income that I'm using to purchase other stocks. And then you have companies that I hold, which is about 50% of my portfolio, which are low yield, but they're typically growing really quickly. These are companies that I think that they're worth holding for a long term, long period of time. This dividend that they're going to give me is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger over time so that I can buy more stocks or sell out of them in the future once they've given me all of this money and all of this growth once I retire to then buy companies that pay high amounts of money today so that I can live off of my dividends. Of course I have a chunk of my portfolio which is kind of somewhere in the middle. It's only about 16 almost 17 percent of my portfolio. These are companies that are paying a decent sized dividend but they're still growing but just just maybe not quite as fast in comparison. So the dividend of a company, of course, can change drastically at any given time, as you saw earlier in the video with AT&T making this huge announcement that they're making this huge cut. So you always just need to be mindful and aware of what's going on with your different stocks that you're holding. So again, just in recap, a dividend is the free cash flow that the company has that they think is better used by giving back to the shareholders it keeps their shareholders happy. It can potentially drive up the price of their stock. People may be more interested in them because they can hold them for a different reason other than just pure growth. Um, this money, of course, can be used in a variety of different ways, but this is their choice to give it back to you, the shareholder, so that they can hopefully, you know, get your interest to continue holding them for the long term. Hopefully you found this helpful today. And if you did, please let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear your feedback. Is there anything that you want to learn about? I would love to share that information with you so that you can continue to expand your knowledge. And please do subscribe to my videos. Um, it means a lot to me and it helps me understand what kind of community that we're building here. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.